Um, do you know how to watch things uh, two times speed? I'm just going to go ahead and suggest that. I'm Julia right Graham, and for now, this channel is called SenseSiblings.ca. The .ca stands for Canada, where I am, and the Sense Sibling stands for you, my Scent brother, Scent sister, my non-binary Scent sibling. I'm going to insert a bunch of adjectives here about a lovely lady who tagged me. She's lovely. She's knowledgeable. She's supportive, beautiful, kind. And then there are a whole bunch of other adjectives, all positive, that I'm not going to put here. Uh, Joss's fragrance mixology. Joss tagged me to do the me then and me now tag. Uh, having to do with scents and so I'm calling this one Sentimental Avenue. See what I did there? Uh, that was a song by Night Ranger back in the day, which is when I used to wear the first perfumes I'm going to talk about. So this is the tag and if you want to join me to see what I was like then and now, fragrance wise, let's go. Okay, this might be all over the place. This might be crazy. I don't know. I, uh, I've only been doing this for a year. Cut me some slack. <laughs> I want to talk about fragrances that I used to like uh, as a younger person and fragrances that I like now uh, and uh, just sort of compare the two as per the tag. I'm going to link uh, down below a bunch of folk who have already done this video. By way of introduction, I just, uh, if, you, if you're new here and you haven't seen a lot of videos from me, I love sweeter fragrances and I love gourmand fragrances. And I just remembered I need to type a note into my notes. Give me one second. I think that it's always been the case that I like sweeter perfumes and I always have. I'm not a floral person in general, but these aren't hard and fast rules, and so anyway, as a younger person, I really, uh, I wore whatever my sister let me sneak out of her room. Let's just say it like it is. So I want to talk to you about some of the scents that were me as I was growing up, and I'll litter this with, you know, some photos if you'd like, photography, I eh? Here we go, uh, I did like sweeter scents. I want to start with one scent in particular that I just, I can't even believe this happened. I want to talk to you about my search for Dewberry. Chandra, who is the grim reader on Instagram, saw my video of the me looking to replace an olfactive memory. I created a video where I spoke about the fact that I would love to get my nose on Dewberry from the body shop. It was an oil, I'll insert a picture here. It was an oil that they had at the body shop oil um, bar. And it was something that I wore constantly throughout the first years of my university life. And the way that it's described uh, on, on the Fragrantica is that it's a fruity, floral, woody, citrus, powdery, white floral. So that's a good indication of what I was into when I was in university. Oh my God, what wasn't I into when I was in university? The notes in this one, this was a fresh scent. And it, but it was really pretty pungent. I'm reading the notes here, so my eyes are gonna go a little bit crazy, but it's, it's a floral, fruity fragrance for women, all the Fs. That's what we were doing in university, let me tell you. So black currant, grapefruit, red apple, and pear. Middle notes are freesia, jasmine, lily of the valley, and rose. And the base notes, peach, apricot, cedar, and musk. So this is a fruity concoction that would punch you in the face, man. But you would walk into whatever class and six people be wearing it. And they go, oh, come on, sit over here in the dewberry section. So <laughs> I loved that. And I put out a video saying, gosh, I wish I could smell that. I purchased a Lalique Amethyst because one of my friends here uh, on YouTube said that the opening was reminiscent of that, so I bought that. I also uh, bought Bulgari Omnia Coral uh, upon, and when I got that, I smelled it and I was like, oh, that smells a little bit like Dewberry. Anyway, I'll link the video up above where I talk about Dewberry. And so this, this, I don't want this to go on forever, but I need to mention Chandra the Grim Reader on Instagram messages me and she goes, I found this oil and I want to send it to you. 
And then she did. And it got to me on my anniversary. You can't make this stuff up. Chandra, I don't even know how to thank you at all, except to say that the bottle that she sent me, I'll put the, a picture of the bottle here and a picture of the box it came in. It's it, that's it. That is it, my heart is full. Like I feel like I don't even know what else to wish for anymore. <laughs> I have dewberry and it smells exactly like it used to. It's a punch in the old factory organ. It's a fantastic, to me clean, but I guess it's fruity and floral and woody, uh, scent that has brought me back to memories. Nothing triggers a memory like um, a scent. I'm gonna insert a picture where I happen to know that I'm wearing dewberries so I'm gonna put that in and um, I remember this day like it was yesterday you can see my mom in the background of the picture going like this in the glass I've used this picture in a um, video before anyway dewberry oil by the body shops Chandra I thank you thank you thank you do check her out on Instagram she has an amazing collection and she's an amazingly gracious person who also enjoys some of the same hobbies I do, which is rare because we share a hobby that most women don't share. That is the first one I want to talk about. Is it fair to say that I still like a fruity floral? I'm not sure if that one's fair and so I'm glad I put that one first because I don't know that I love that genre of perfume of fruity. In fact, I'm pretty sure that I don't. Uh, but I love that scent. So that one's not really fair. The scents I'm gonna mention now quickly, oh my gosh, sorry guys. The scents I'm gonna mention now quickly are ones that I remember wearing uh, as a youth and ones that I can, I can remember what they smell like. And I've kind of picked different things out of my collection now that I think smell like that. So am I the same? I don't know. Back in the day, Debbie Gibson, electric youth. Gosh, we all wanted to be Debbie Gibson. She's still an amazing musician. Uh, and so she, and she was at her height of fame when she was 16 years old. And she did some amazing, amazing stuff that us teeny boppers loved to listen to. And she put out a scent called Electric Youth. It was a Revlon scent. And it's, a, again, a fruity floral gourmand fragrance for women. So gourmand, again, is simply uh, a term for a fragrance that smells good enough to eat. Enough said? Enough said. So I liked a gourmand even back then. Fragrantica is saying, thank you Fragrantica, Fragrantica is saying that it's fruity notes, sweet notes, very specific, amber floral notes and woodsy notes. Do I still like that? I'm just scrolling down to see what I put with so that's Revlon's Electric Youth. Do I have anything with fruity, sweet notes, with amber floral notes and woody notes? You know what I do. And it's fresh, uh, fresh cream. It's fresh cream by philosophy. And if you take a look at the note breakdown, I'll put a picture of the bottle in the note breakdown somewhere. Um, I don't, I don't think that these two are similar because fresh cream is a lactonic, so what that means, there's so many terms. It's a lactonic, it's creamy, it smells a little bit like whipped cream. So that's one of the only notes that fresh cream has that Electric Youth doesn't have. So fresh and creamy. So do I still like the fruity floral gourmand category? I guess I still do. The next one I cannot do a video about me in the past and me now uh, is Exclamation by Cody. Did you wear Exclamation? I feel like we all wore Exclamation. My husband always says, yeah, I remember how that one tastes. Gosh, we all wore it. And uh, this one was launched in 1988. And I there's a nose behind it, and so I wanna make sure Terraform Olfactophiles always mentions who the nose is, and I think that that's the only way to go. Uh, the person who created this is Sophia. Groisman. So Exclamation is a floral fragrance, but listen to the notes. There's uh, peach, apricot, bergamot, and green notes. So it's fruity. 
<laughs> the middle notes were heliotrope, orris root, rose, jasmine, and lily of the valley. So there's your flowers. And the base notes are vanilla, musk, sandalwood, amber, cinnamon, and cedar. Mm. That's such a good word. Mm. Uh, exclamation was sweet. And to me, it was very powdery and uh, everybody wore it. You know how I said everybody wore, do very everybody wore exclamation. I bet you wore explanation explanation. <laughs> we had some explaining to do back in those days. Yeah. So high school uh, exclamation. Do I have anything now that smells like exclamation? Well, I think the thing about exclamation was it didn't smell like anything real. It was it, it's touted as a floral, but I'm telling you, I didn't get any florals. It was just a mess of sweet with some spice behind it. And so I'm just going to say that it was an artificial smelling thing. And Nowadays, I really do love Intense Cafe and uh, I have Arabian's Tonka that I did a video about the other day and they are both very artificial smelling, sweet scents that uh, they're supposed to be florals in Intense Cafe, they're supposed to be rose uh, in, in both of them actually, there's, there's rose in both of them and I don't perceive the rose and I didn't perceive any of the flowers in exclamation either. So there it is, uh, the exclamation has stayed in my life, incarnated as Intense Cafe and Arabian's Tonka from Montel. The next scent that I remember so well from my youth, see photo here, was something called Le Jardin d'Amour by Max Factor, which was a floral aldehyde fragrance. I love aldehydes and I know that. I do not remember this one being aldehydic. So aldehydes are, uh, you know, Chanel is famous for their aldehydic uh, backgrounds, backbones in their fragrances. And so uh, this Le Jardin d'Amour, I don't remember it being aldehydic, but there it is. It was launched in 1986 and I know that's when I was wearing it. Rose, aldehydes, fruity notes, something called Palisander Rosewood and bergamot at the top, and then floral in the mid, of course. I mean, you can't get away from that. There's that uh, rose, lang lang, orris root, and lily of the valley, which I don't love. So clearly lily of the valley was being used a lot in the 80s. And the base notes were, again, ylang ylang, musk, cedarwood, amber, tonka bean, vanilla, benzone, and cedar. Do I love these? I don't know that I love these, but I'm telling you. Aldehydic quality is something that I still enjoy. So for Le Jardin d'Amour, I know that I've tried to recreate this olfactive memory as well because I bought Jasmine Wisp by Rosassi. Maria made me buy that, Maria Colette here on YouTube. Uh, a lot of people talk about that one. I know Veronica has spoken about it as well from Veronica Says. So I purchased that one. That one's a really great price for a really great scent. It's a floral fruity for sure. And uh, it's got white florals in it, the um, Rosassi jasmine wisp and the misnomer of that is that jasmine isn't listed as one of the notes but listen 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 linda le jardin d'amour by max factor uh smelled like that to me and so i really enjoy having jasmine wisp to remind me of the days of le jardin d'amour uh, you might want to get a snack or something we're not even half done The next olfactory memory that I'm just realizing now, I also have been in search of. Is that what we do? We just go in search of what we had? I don't know. I don't know if that's what part of this fragrance journey is because again, uh, I read or heard somewhere that your uh, memory is triggered most strongly by your sense of smell. And it sounds like from what I've been saying all this uh, time, that I'm just trying to recapture my ill-spent youth by going down Sentimental Street. Let's see if I um, The next one I want to talk about is something that I'm so excited is going to come back into my life. I don't have any information on it. It was called Spiced Tea by Calgon and it was a body mist. It was a drugstore body mist and to me it smelled like spiced tea. And I just loved it and I've been looking for that as well. And I found out 
Veronica says, sent me a sample of something called Chloe Nomad Absolu. I've never been a fan of the Chloe anything. They smell pretty to me. And pretty isn't necessarily what I go for in a perfume. It's not not, but to me, the Chloe lines didn't do anything. But Chloe Nomad Absolu, the second I sprayed it, I knew. So I'm going to do a review on that when it comes. But to me, um, I think it's the oak moss that stands out. There's no tea note in Chloe Nomad Absolu. The pyramid structure for Chloe Nomad Absolu is mossy, woody, aromatic, earthy, fruity, green, powdery, musky, sweet, and balsamic. It's a sheep, which just means that it is a combination of notes. I will scroll here, because right now I'm staring at a little green dot. I don't remember, but it's fruity. Uh, and the nose behind it is my Paris boyfriend, Quentin Beach. So of course I loved it upon first sniff when Veronica sent it to me. Thank you so much. Mirabelle Blum. pears at the top, and then oak moss and divana, and then cedarwood and musk. So there's no tea note in there. I don't know why it reminds me of this spiced tea as much as it does, but let me tell you, it really does. I'm not I had a Benetton phase in my life. We have a tiny little mall in the town where I grew up, and it was called Intercity Mall. And for a little while, we, we had a Benetton store. And I didn't understand the clothes, but I understood the perfume. And I had two Benetton perfumes, and looks like they were both pretty florals. What can I say? Tribu by Benetton is a woody, fruity, aromatic floral. It was launched in 93, so this was in my university days, and the uh, nose behind the fragrance, thank you so much to Bernard Elena for creating that one. The, uh, it was black currant and Italian mandarin and violet leaf, so there was a green thing going on, and then there was chamomile, Moroccan jasmine, ylang ylang, and Bulgarian rose, and then oak moss, benzoin, and sandalwood. I remember this scent so well. This was a sexy, not deep, but not, light scent. It was beautiful and I've not found anything to replace it but I have found a bottle of it. Lisa's pop-up in Canada has them. Um, I don't think the performance was great but this was a really nice one and I don't have anything in my collection I don't think that reminds me of that one. No. That one was a, that one was a special one. So the other Benetton one that I have, I don't know why they're not in order here. The other Benetton one that I had was Colors. Did you did you have a Benetton? Did you wear the Benetton scents? Gosh, they were such an, I'll, I'll insert some pictures if I can find some. Benetton was like a very forward, globally focused fashion house and they had just the coolest stuff. You know what, I'll insert a picture of myself wearing a sweater that I got from there that I used to love. Oh my gosh, I love that sweater. So Colors was their original scent and it was an amber fragrance for women. Uh, it was launched in 1987 and also Bernard Elena. And it was a flory, flory. <laughs> Colors was fruity, sweet, white floral, woody, aromatic, earthy, green. Can you see a theme happening here? Um, so I don't know that I have anything in my collection like that now, but it was a fresh floral. Editing Yulia here. I just can't resist. I have to pop on here and mention the following scents. Anais Anais by Cacherel and Lauren by Ralph Lauren and Obsession by Calvin Klein. Those were also the scents of my ill-spent youth and I didn't get to talk about them because this video would have been a million years long but I'll put pictures up on the screen of them as well. Did you have these? Eee, I remember them so well. Kind of thing and it's something that I loved from my past. We have been down Sentimental Street on the Avenue. Thank, thank you Joss's Fragrance Mixology. Thank you, you, my scent brother, scent sister and non-binary scent sibling. Thank you to all of the YouTubers that I have mentioned whose channels shall be linked down below. That was a lot of memories. That was a lot. That was really good. Thank you for this tag, Joss. It's uh, pretty spectacular to go back in time and to see that I'm still the same person. Maybe my tastes have evolved, but they haven't changed. This encompasses 
my past and my present fragrance wise. I'm Yulia Graham and uh, I'm spent. <laughs> if you have any uh, comments, questions, or concerns regarding my ill spent youth or any of the perfumes that I uh, wore, Aw, that's Richard texting. <laughs> I, uh, I love to chat. You can hit me up on Instagram. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being here for me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We'll see you in the next one. Down on Sentimental Street in the Avenue. Let's, let's try to film here. It's not great, but it would be great. I don't know where it would be great. Where would this be great? Uh, it'd be great if uh, I was a different person. It's not nice, don't say that. I'm trying to find a place to film in a new environment because, oh, booby shot, uh, because uh, I'm here in a different office today and I'm by myself in the building and I'm taking a filming break. Do you do this? Do you keep the granny? <laughs> T-M-I, oi, okay, I know, I know it's gross, whatever, don't judge me, I just filmed for five minutes and said absolutely nothing, gosh, a year, eh, this is what you get after a year, you still don't know anything, you suck at YouTube, you suck at YouTube, that's not nice, I can't leave that in, I'll let it that out, okay. Yeah, I was a dick. No, I clearly remember being not a good person. Oh my gosh. What did, what did my youth, what did my younger perfume days smell like? There was like this backdrop of these beautiful perfumes. Cigarette smoke, stale cheap wine, boys, ew. Yeah.